Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall I? Today I'll be presenting the case of a 36-year-old female who presented with complaints of alleged history of ingestion of caustic soda three days prior to the presentation to our ER. Patient has gone to an outside hospital and was referred here for further management. On 10-second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented. Airway, patient was mechanically ventilated with a ET tube of size 7.5 and the angle of mouth was 21. On breathing, patient was maintained on the mechanical ventilator with an FiO2 of 30, PEEP of 5, respiratory rate of 12 on PCV mode. Circulation, patient had a BP of 120 bar 70 mm Hg with a pulse rate of 84 per minute. Two large bore IV cannulas were put at this time. Disability, patient had a GCS of 15 out of 15 and pupils were equal and reactive to light. On exposure, patient was febrile and GRBS was 140 mg per deciliter. Adjoints to the primary survey, at this time we had taken an ABG which showed a pH of 7.45, PCO2 of 34, PO2 of 96, bicarbonate of 23 and with no electrolyte imbalance. Also CBC CRP was taken which showed an HB of 11, total count of 5.9 and CRP of 20. Okay, suppose this patient came to the ER with acute ingestion. So this patient came three days back. So suppose this patient is directly coming to ER. So uh, what all things will you assess in the airway breathing circulation? Initially, we have to wear the personal protective equipment mm. and then uh, like uh, gloves and the gown and the mask, facial, uh, etc. And then uh, if the patient has the soiled clothes, those clothes also should be removed. Mm. And then coming to the assessment, initially we have to look for the airway, whether mm. the airway is patent or not. Usually in these type of injections, there can be severe drooling of saliva, uh, collection of saliva in the mouth, gurgling. Patient can also have strider or hoarseness of voice. Mm. Uh, this uh, strider and hoarseness of voice usually comes if it, uh, this patient took alkali, soda by carb, right? So, um, uh, so uh, what sodium, was, hydroxide. So, sodium hydroxide was taken. If the patient is taking any ammonia containing substances, that will more um, cause um, hoarseness of voice and strider more commonly. Okay. So, we look for the airway patency or not. Mm. Initial step is to stabilize the airway. If the patient is having any of these, then mm. we can go for mechanical. Any change in voice or any swelling, swelling uh, or edema or cavity don't wait for it to worsen because that there is a high chance for that to worsen so immediately if you see such manifestation uh, immediately uh, intubate the patient and in case of burns also before the patient goes into mucosal edema we will have to put all the tubes like ET tube Foley's Riles tube and all in burns patient this patient Riles tube is contraindication and uh, contraindicated okay so ET tube as early as possible and uh, when we are intubating note that we won't be put, put, placing any blind nasal intubation and such things won't be done. Only intubation under visualization because there is high chance of penetration and perforation. Okay. So in, initially we have to stabilize the airway then keep the patient for the NPO. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to put any nasogastric tube until the endoscopy is done for the patient. Mm -hmm. So uh, some uh, people, some studies and all will tell that if it is like um, like very weak basis and all, we can give water to the patient and we can give some milk to the patient to neutralize the alkali. But it is not uh -huh. practiced routinely. Okay. Usually uh, neutralizing agent should be not given because it can provoke vomiting in the patient, patient and again re-exposure of the alkali can take place. So no neutralizing agents are given to the patient. Mm. Uh, then uh, preferably we should take the patient for an endoscopy within the 24 mm. that hours. That is in the airway, airway we have assessed this thing then breathing circulation. Coming to the breathing uh, we have to maintain the saturation and then uh, coming to the circulation patient can develop shock in mm. these patients. Patient can develop perforation, upper GI bleed and then patient can go into shock. Mm. So maintaining the BP is important. So uh, in the patient, if a patient comes with acute ingestion, what are your priorities? Our personal protection, mm. mainly the airway part and circulation BP and all can get affected only after some time. And after airway, the most important part is D. D is not disability, decontamination. So uh, as you told, we need to remove all the clothing from the patient and uh, we need to give thorough wash, especially if the this alkali has exposed to the skin and all, what changes can happen? 
they can be dribble burns can be there mm. due to the drooling of the saliva on the chest and or hands all they can be dribble mm. burns there can be charring or soapy the... soapy appearance a soapy uh, feeling will be there so that that should be washed and if at all there is an exposure to the ice and then that also should be thoroughly washed at least for uh, 30 to 40 uh, minutes we will have to wash give an eye wash okay so that is decontamination then adjuncts what will you do adjuncts basically we have to take an abg because mm -hmm. uh, in caustic ingestions it the patient can have high anion gap acidosis mm -hmm. due to the lack uh, if the patient goes into shock then they can be lactic acidosis also mm -hmm. so primarily we take an abg of so lactic patient. acidosis can happen because of hypoxia Hypoxic. in this patient and because of circulatory loss or because uh, or, or because of the yeah. process of necrosis lactate can go high then another uh, thing is uh, we, uh, usually we won't be ha uh, always we won't be seeing high anion gap metabolic acidosis especially in case of acid ingestion uh, there can be high anion gap metabolic acidosis but if the patient is taking uh, what component the patient is is likely to have normal anion gap when will you see normal anion gap routinely normal anion metabolic acidosis Ah, diarrhea vomiting in a hospitalized patient when will you see hyperchloremia. hyperchloremia so if the patient has ingested hydrogen chloride which is an acid that can cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis okay so then uh, abg can be taken then uh, you can look for the inflammatory markers crp in the patient ecg should be ECG taken should be especially taken. in acid ingestion uh, so hydrofluorides and all can cause Cal qtc, QTC prolongation. prolongation due to hypocalcemia can be there so ecg mm. should be taken mm. then, then cbc and all and the rest of the blood investigation like uh, hemolysis um, then patient might go into coagulopathy uh, renal failure these things and all comes as a sec, um, in the later stage but we can take the baseline uh, rft cbc coagulation panel and all okay so uh, after managing abcd and taking the adjuncts next step is to keep the patient npo okay. alkali ingestion npo do not place any rails tube or do not do any gastric decontamination or activated charcoal shouldn't be done it is completely contraindicated okay coming to the sample history a mm. uh, 36 year old female known case of old tb presented with alleged history of deliberate ingestion of caustic soda uh, about 150 ml 3 days prior to the presentation to our er it was sodium hydroxide uh, that was bio green drain cleaner used in the house patient was having severe burning sensation of mouth and throat following the ingestion and then patient started to have drooling of the saliva at that time she presented to an outside hospital and it was within 1 hour of ingestion patient was taken up uh, for uh, immediate laryngoscopy in the outside hospital which showed edema around the arytenoids and the surrounding structures in view of the threatened airway they had uh, intubated the patient and following that gastro medicine consultation and ogd scopy was done from the outside which showed superficial bleeding ulcers in the oral cavity pharynx and the proximal part of the esophagus she was kept npo and then referred for further management to a hospital so uh, when should an ogd scopy be done in a patient with um, caustic ingestion uh, preferably we uh, prefer before 24 hours mm -hmm. up to 48 hours also ogd scopy can be done but uh, the most uh, erosions takes place between the 24 and 48 hours and uh, no, erosion can, start happening, happening from 24 hours to 48, 48 hours. hours and peaks by fifth day, day of the ingestion okay so within the first uh, 12 hours if you are able to do an ogd scopy that is the best because after that 12 hours slowly the erosion will start set in so if we are not able to do within the first 48 hours then when when can we do then only after 2 to 3 weeks we will be able to do because uh, after that the, the patient will be in the process of erosion so first ogd will be done to see how much injury has happened and the second is to look for the complication secondary to that okay so uh, alkali where will it affect more the it esophagus or it will affect more in the esophagus acid acid in the stomach, stomach. okay so what all changes can happen uh, in the esophagus in the esophagus there can be mucosal erosions can take place ulceration can be there mm. so first it can be sloughing will be there then can go to the ulceration 
Emotions. So first, first uh, it is divided into different stages. Mm-hmm. Or first one we can tell that it is somewhat like a first degree burn. So mm-hmm. there will be only, only erythema and it, uh, uh, erythema and hyperemia will be there. Hyperemia will be there. Okay. Then second then, stage there will be ulcerations. Mild emotions. ulceration. So ulceration so, can be there, which can further complicate into stenosis. Okay. Then Structures. deep ulcers can be circumferential. Deep ulcers can be there. Mm. Then ne- uh, circum- uh, not circumferential necrosis can be superficial necrosis can be there. Mm. Last stage deep necrosis can be there. Transmural okay. necrosis can be there. So in severe cases, patient can go into liquefactive mm. necrosis, necrosis and complete uh, perforation. Uh, rest of the complication can happen, and this patient can go into uh, if at all the esophagus is not perforating, there is high chance of structure and okay. Then uh, another com- rest. After that, uh, other complication can also develop a pneumoni- uh, chemical pneumonitis, mediastinitis, and then patient can go for the perforation also, hmm. causing uh, severe uh, abdominal pain with uh, rebound tenderness and rigidity. Or hmm. patient can also go uh, have uh, depending on where the hmm. esophagus or stomach is perforating, patient might have pericarditis, mediastinitis, pulmonary edema, and all. Okay. Okay. Then, on, uh, then in the abdomen, what are the, what? So uh, in the airway, we have told drooling of saliva, vomiting, hematemesis can happen. Abdomen, there uh, can be a patient can develop uh, vomiting. Then patient will have severe burning sensation in the abdomen. Mm. Then uh, if at all perforation is there, patient can have severe tender, diffuse severe tenderness. Uh, on examination, there will be guarding rigidity, rebound tenderness all. And this base is passing down, so uh, there is high chance of loose stool stenosis also. On uh, so uh, then in the stomach what will happen? So esophagus we have told stomach what will happen? Stomach also there will be um, sloughing. Sloughing mm-hmm. will be there and it will be like a slimy appearance will be there in the stomach also. Okay. On general examination there was no pallor, rictus, uh, clubbing, uh, lymphadenopathy. Facial swelling was present. There was sloughing of an ulcerated buccal mucosa on examination. Ulcers and erosions were present on the lip and on over the tongues. Then other systems were within the normal limit. Following, uh, we, uh, we had given a consultation for the gastro medicine, mm. and uh, she was admitted under gastro medicine. They had done a CT of chest. CT mm. chest was done, which uh, impression was normal. There was no features of any mediastinitis or uh, perforation. Mm. Uh, patient was also started on broad spectrum antibiotics uh, because uh, mild elevation of the inflammatory markers were present. And then uh, an END consultation was done to look for the uh, laryngeal edema, but it was not uh, progressively increasing. CCT also came to be as normal, uh, therefore patient was uh, planned for extubation and then uh, without any complications she was extubated. Uh, oro maxillofacial consultation was given in view of all the ulcers and the uh, uh, erosions of the lips and tongue and she was started on the lignocaine gel. Further patient was improved and patient was discharged. So mostly this patient uh, because of superficial, this patient had only superficial arrhythmia features. So maybe because of that uh, patient didn't go into complications. So so when will they plan on uh, doing repeat endoscopy? Repeat endoscopy, if the symptoms are worsening Mm. uh, in terms of like uh, there is severe drooling of saliva, patient is having difficulty to swallow uh, food or saliva, then we can do an endoscopy or uh, for preventing the stricture formation also prophylactically we can go for a uh, endoscopy. Standing, that will be planned after three weeks. weeks. Okay. So in the ED we have already mentioned how to deal with the airway, decontamination, not to put rails to gastric wash and all, then what else will you do in the ED? Uh, pain management should mm. be given because the patient will have severe pain. Mm. Uh, so pain management should be given. Uh, we can start on the, uh, after the endoscopy is done, uh, nasogastric tube can be put. And uh, if there is only mild injury, uh, then uh, after 24 hours, we can uh, try for the oral feeds. Mm. So in the ER uh, point of view, ER initially we will keep NPO. Mm. Only after endoscopy, we will plan on starting feeds. feeds. Okay. Mm. If it is a severe injury, then only after 48 hours we should tr- give a trial for the liquids. Mm-hmm. If the patient is tolerating, it is okay, otherwise through the nasogastric you can have. If it is a high degree injury, then only parenteral nutrition should be started for the patient. Mm. And fluid and fluid. electrolyte balance should be maintained. maintained. Mm. Okay. Uh, prophylactic antibiotics should be started. Prophylactic antibiotics, it's not usually recommended, uh, but some 
practice like that okay what about giving steroids uh, it is also contradicting actually uh, according to some studies it tells that steroids can uh, prevent the stricture formation also it can decrease the inflammatory reaction but in some other studies it tells that there is no indication for steroids steroids usually they are telling in case of hoarseness of voice stridor and all to reduce the upper airway uh, airway uh, airway inflammation we can give steroids but the problem is if you are giving steroids some symptoms like esophageal perforation these symptoms will be masked and uncontrolled sugar stress complications can be there so uh, it is not used okay and after 3 weeks we will be planning on doing a iso um, uh, ogdiscopy okay. dilatation, dilatation stenting and all and if at all the patient go into severe injury then we might have to plan okay. esophagectomy okay. gastrectomy okay. and we will have to uh, do something else some uh, corrective surgery should be done okay and uh, also note that in the er main concern is pain management personal protective equipments and washing mm-hmm. washing decontamination which includes skin washing eye washing and all okay anything else uh, basically there are uh, two classifications what we use one is endoscopy classification and the ct finding classification for knowing the uh, severity of the injury according to the ct classification grade 1 there will be normal uh, appearance of the surrounding organs grade 2 surrounding soft tissue will be inflamed and there will be wall edema and also on cct there will be post contrast enhancement will be there grade 3 there will be transmural necrosis with absence of the post con- uh, contrast wall enhancement according to the endoscopic grading zero is normal uh, one is mucosal edema and hyperemia will be present 2a is there will be a superficial ulcer 2b is uh, there will be deep ulcers 3a focal necrosis will be there and 3b there will be an extensive necrosis Mm. from 2b onwards i think steroids are suggested but that also is not practiced okay mm-hmm.